Good evening, everybody. Great to see you. My name is Dave Morrison. I'm the manager of the Camden Opera House. And we're so glad you're joining us tonight, especially you folks here in the house. I want to thank you for wearing a mask. We're doing our best to follow Maine CDC guidelines and to look out for the safety and comfort of our staff and performers and neighbors while still offering you the very best show we can, so we really appreciate your help. This soundcheck program, like all of our free live stream events, is supported by your donations to the Community Arts Fund. You can help to keep this series going by donating at camdenoperahouse.com, and if you have already, thank you so much. I also want to thank our friends at WERU, who've been so helpful in helping us to spread the word about these shows. Tonight's concert is sponsored by our friends at 40 Paper, who've been great partners in so many ways, especially by providing the bar for the Blue Cafe, which we plan to bring back in 2022. So Josh, thank you very much. And finally, I want to thank the Camden Opera House staff, Juniper and Luke in the booth, Dagny, Beth O'Connor, who greeted you, all our wonderful volunteers, all the folks whose hard work behind the scenes makes this possible. So, tonight, Sarah Trunzo is an acclaimed singer-songwriter with a sharp eye for the details that make a character or a story ring true, and it makes her music beautiful and haunting. She's also been a driving force behind organizations like Veggies for All and Waldo County Bounty. We're very excited to have her here at the Camden Opera House. Please join me in welcoming Sarah Trunzo. Thank you so much, Dave. You made me sound great. I hope you don't regret it. Ain't that what you 
very very much it's so nice to to be here I've never played in this um, in this room before and the sound is fantastic and the staff is fantastic and everything's so beautiful when you're a traveling singer songwriter um, you get to play all different kinds of places <laughs> and um, very few of them are as nice as this theater so it's really great um, it's great to be here today um, it's especially exciting to be here because I'm ramping up to put a record out in the end of September. And um, if I have to be anywhere in the world in September, I think coastal Maine is the right spot. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's not a bad place to be stuck. Um, if, if we get stuck here, if I get stuck here, <laughs> it's not a bad place at all. Um, that tune was a song off my upcoming record. And um, this is also one, it's called Kind Bone. Got a hangover from too much of a good thing. Might get a song from it, yeah, but it hurts my head.
big sucker for um, sad country songs, like kind of all the stereotypes that people use to make fun of country music, broken hearts and pickup trucks, you know, my dog died, my girl left me. Um, I thought it was really funny too. I grew up in New Jersey and then I moved to Maine and I thought this kind of music was sort of hilarious and, um, and then I started listening to it just like ironically, I thought. And, um, and then I started to get, you know, kind of really swept away in it. And then I'd like find myself, once I got a smartphone, I, one of my favorite things to do was look up who wrote that song that was on country radio. And I still kind of didn't get at that point <clears throat> that, um, that I might be interested in songwriting. I just thought like, I don't know, isn't this what everybody's doing? <laughs> isn't everybody crying to a country song on the side of the road and then Googling who the co-writers are? Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't think everybody is, but if you are doing that, you might be a songwriter. So try it out. Um, anybody can do it, really. Um, it's not some special thing. Um, but I, I got kind of so enamored with the idea that I ended up about five years ago um, leaving Maine, leaving some really, really awesome food security work, selling my house, moving to Nashville, because like, I wanted to learn how to be a songwriter, and I wanted to study with some of my favorite songwriters, and I've been really lucky to have the opportunity to do that. But a lot of the song ideas I had came from rural Maine. They came from farming and doing food security work and doing some of the small town things, you know? Like, think about if, you, if you're not visiting, if you're from a small town in New England, you know, think about the stuff that happens in town meeting and like how you just can't make it up sometimes. Like you could not write a better character um, than the person who's arguing against the rising cost of recycling and we should burn all our trash and has a recycle sweater on. You know, like you just, like you, it's so good. Um, anyway, so I think that doing work in small community and in food pantries, soup kitchens, farms, particularly, sowed a lot of seeds um, of song ideas. And this is, this is one of those. This is a song called Food and Medicine. week of the month again and I'm choosing between food and medicine medicine and heat heat and doing something with my girlfriends I suppose the choice is easy cause I refuse to let the pipes freeze let a bunch of ice bust up best thing that I own. Nobody tells rich men what to do with their millions. Got a bunch of ideas for my seven. Check on the stars and smoke one cigarette after I put her to bed. Don't worry, I did not buy them on my EBT. was given to me for taking care of my memory I've watched your fade to nothing while the roof goes to rust it's hard to 
get out all that much But I take her to the senior lunch Just to watch your eyes light up And so she let me set her hair Nobody tells rich men what to do with their millions. Got a bunch of ideas for my seven fifty. Check on stars and smoke one cigarette after I. Put her to bed. Don't worry, I did not buy them on my EBT. It's the last week of the month again, and I'm choosing between food and medicine. Thank you very much. Um, I, um, I like to joke that I have mostly songs about birds and grief um, and things like the decaying housing stock. So um, I did medium in Nashville because <laughs> um, uh, there's not much market for that kind of music. <laughs> um, but thank goodness for radio stations like WERU, community radio stations, folk radio stations, venues like this one. Um, it's been a really funny puzzle to try to penetrate kind of more mainstream country, which is, you know, even if you just hear it in the gas station, you know, it's a lot of like cut off shorts and pontoon boats and stuff. Feel good songs of the summer, I like to call them. I have feel bad songs of the winter, um, which don't sell beer. <laughs> you know, um, maybe they do, but for different reasons. Um, so this is maybe as close as I get to a feel good song of summer, but this is, this is also about a heartache, so. It's the best I could do. Um, no, but this is also a song about kind of how, um, you know, Nashville's another home to me and just such a magic place um, that it's a, special, it's a special bubble because being a creative person there is totally typical and it makes you kind of less special and there's something really kind of liberating and sweet about that. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time in Unity, Maine, and there's only so many songwriters in Unity, Maine, and you might get to feeling proud, but you go to Nashville and oof, they'll take care of that for you real quick. This is called Nashville Time. Ever home. 
it don't make you mine, no. Oh. Tell me that you cry all the way to Bowling Green, but that never makes a change, a goddamn thing. I know that pride, no one is awful lonesome, but you ain't got a thing. Don't make you mine. As I was getting to the end of that, I thought, oh man, I, I kind of had been setting up a really rough um, sounding story about Nashville, and I, I love it there, and I will go back, but you know, there was like this whole pandemic situation, <clears throat> which kind of wrecked the touring music industry, um, and there also, right at the beginning of the pandemic in Nashville, there was a tornado, and I got evicted from the house I was living in. It was just like very, very clear, it was time to come back to Maine. And I'm glad that I did, because as Dave mentioned, um, I was lucky to work with friends in co-founding an organization called Waldo County Bounty, which does really awesome food security work. Um, if, you're, if you're local, it's something you could get involved with. If you're not local, it's something that um, you could give to if you have capacity to do so. But they like um, purchase food from farmers to get it directly into food pantries so that folks who are experiencing hunger have access to like really healthy, fresh, organic food and the farmers get paid for it. It's like super cool. And there's a branch of the organization that does gleaning from farm fields. So stuff that might go to waste goes to food pantries, soup kitchens. Um, there's support for gardeners. It's just, it's really rad. Um, <laughs> look it up, <laughs> look it up. So today, um, I'm going to play, I think I'm going to play one more, and then I'm going to um, get some help from my friend Kate McCann, Princess Pine. Um, so please stick around. If you're watching from home, stick around for that. It's going to get more interesting, I promise. Um, but uh, today, I had a single come out that's in advance of the record. It's called Liberty Tool. Um, if we were in an environment where I could see all of you, either the at-home people or the, in the audience people, I would say, who has been to Liberty Tool? Well, maybe you guys could tell me. Who's been to, has anybody been to Liberty Tool? <laughs> okay. Um, so as you know, it's a very, very special place. And I, once I started to get into songwriting, sometimes you write to a title. You think, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if I had a song called something? You know, you overhear somebody say something and you think, I gotta write that song. And, um, Liberty Tool was a term because I lived in unity for over a decade that I have, of course, heard so many times. It's this, for those who don't know, it's this unbelievable antique store, tool emporium, um, junk shop, performance art piece um, that just goes on and on and on and on. And when you say they have hammers, they don't just have a couple. They've got like a hundred hammers and they're all different and they all have a little price tag lovingly applied to them, very affordable tools. <laughs> it's just this really special place, but this idea of liberty and tool, like, well, what is a liberty tool? And um, anyway, I just kind of dove after that. This is, this is the song that's coming out today. Please, um, if you use Spotify or some other streaming service, you can, you can download it or you can stream it through there. Um, and the folks that, that run Liberty Tool are not only tenacious and creative, they're really community-minded, and so they welcomed me with open arms when I said, I'd love to make a music video <laughs> for this really sad song, this sad country waltz, like, will you, can you, will you guys host me? And they were awesome about it. 
Um, so that's um, on my YouTube and on, if you're using social media, you can find it through my social media as well. Mine is burning a hole Through your thicky blue jeans Snow's drifting against Our wind screens Let's load up the dogs And the Subaru Head over the mountain To Liberty too We'll get you a hammer Since we can't turn me into a homestead in white, tracing tradition, I like to carve a song that I knew I'm trying to find my liberty too. Bottled up summer into court jars, Amish paste tomatoes, pears from the yard, a root cellar and a freezer. Say we've been blessed a lot. for something that we haven't got so let's get you a hammer plain and draw now since we can't turn me into a homestead in white your trees I'd like to carve a song that I knew I'm trying to find my liberty to Have you got a crowbar? Have you got a wrecking ball? There's fiddleheads popping alongside of the stream. So I know that my doubt isn't just a cabin fever dream. Cause your eyes are set on four walls and a heart. Sounds just like a cage to my restless heart. But let's get you a hammer, plain and draw enough, since we can't turn me into a homestead in. Thank you. 
Um, while Kate gets set up, Kate McCann, come on out. <laughs> um, Kate's going to play banjo with me on a couple songs. She's a Belfast gal and um, plays, has played a lot of maritime music and traditional music. And um, we just started playing together a couple weeks ago. And it's been a really a joy to have somebody to go play gigs with who, don't take this the wrong way, who isn't a dude. Because I've, play, I've played a lot with like side, side dudes. Um, it's so nice to have a side gal. Um, and um, while you, if you're, are you good? Sometimes it takes a minute to tune up. I was gonna say, yeah. what Kate tunes oh, up? It'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we're at this little um, midpoint, I, I did wanna just give some appreciation to um, the really kind and professional staff of Camden Opera House. Um, Dave, uh, David, who you saw earlier, um, Juniper, who you don't see, but is making all the um, lighting and sound and video magic happen, Dagny, at the box office. Thank you all for taking such good care of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this next song that we're going to play is one I was, I was telling tales out of, like, Nashville hybrid Maine life. Um, I had the opportunity. This is for a long time. This song that we're gonna play next, called Wishbone, was something I thought. I thought this might be one of my better songs, and I thought this like could could go places, and it has gone places, but not not the places I thought it would go. And I had some coaching from um, songwriters I looked up to to go pitch this song to some industry gatekeepers, um, and I had the opportunity to do so, and. Um, I could tell. I started playing this song. And sometimes it kills the mood, you know, and it killed the mood with, I just had a one-on-one -on -one with this um, music industry um, gentleman. And uh, I could tell just 15 seconds in, I lost him. Maybe even the first line, I lost him. He was like in his phone, scrolling, and he waited for me to finish. And he said, um, just like the bad guy in a movie, he said, now what did, how, where do you come from? I said, Maine. He said, now how long have you been here? And I think it had been like nine months or a year or something. And then he said, now what did you used to do? And I didn't want to get into all these details about food security, food pantries, whatever. So I just said farming, because I thought this is simple. And he said, um, were you any good at that? <laughs> um, and as like eviscerating as that was, I thought, this is, this is a scene from the movie. It's got, this is the worst scene from the movie. It's got to get better from here. Um, you know, and it definitely did. But um, anyway, now we'll just play the song. <laughs> now we'll just play it. Deputy told me you ain't no creep. I can see it clear across the parking lot. I can hear it in the way the phone rings. But I see you know about it anyway. He ain't aware there's a creep in his mirror. Oh. 
tires for her sale at the end of my driveway. It's not an invitation for you to show up at my place. I ain't hysterical. I'm also not dumb, and I know those wouldn't fit your truck. with Kate up here? Yeah. <laughs> nothing like a little banjo. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like a little tiny banjo. You don't want it to be too, you don't want it to be too big. Um, Kate's going to take lead on the next one. She's going to play a traditional tune. Um, and I will let you introduce it so I don't say the wrong stuff. to play your song and uh, it's a real privilege to be here at the Camden Opera House. It's a wonderful space. Um, the song I'm going to play is a traditional. I'm sure many of you will recognize it. I learned it from an old time banjo player um, I played with and studied with when I was living in New Zealand for uh, a few years ago. She had learned it when she was living in West Virginia from <laughs> Uh, Dwight Diller, the banjo player, who I think maybe learned it from Clarence Ashley, so that's the fun web of folk music. And this is the cuckoo. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm going to have to do a quick Oh, please, tune. please tune, because I do have um, banjo jokes. Great. But I was given, uh, but uh, they won't be mean. Sometimes that's sometimes jokes are very harsh on the banjo, but I don't know. Have, have what's perfect pitch with a banjo? Has anybody heard this joke? <sighs> yes. <laughs> and for those who didn't hear it, the sound it makes when it's hitting the dumpster, it just boop. It just that's perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> Where would we be though? Okay. All right. <laughs> I was gonna limit myself yeah. to one banjo joke, and I told thank you it was gonna. <laughs> Great. <laughs> the first song is perfectly in tune, and there you go.
Princess Pine, if you're if you're looking for her on social media or the SoundCloud or something like that. As you probably gathered, I'm pretty excited about putting northern New England type themes into um, country song forms that are like you know traditionally include more southeastern themes. Um, the country is everywhere. The rural people are everywhere. It kind of drives me nuts how you can go in, you know, somewhere in like Minnesota and it's the same, or Maine, <laughs> and you hear the same country music about like red dirt and mama and biscuits and it's like, that's not, it's a little different, you know? Um, so I do strive to put some, some northern landscapes and tropes and characters um, into my songs. And this is, this is a good example of that. It's a song called Boat to Jewel. It's damn hard work to let you go. I worked my heart right to the bone. I worked my to a stone and my mind would not leave my God alone so take rough oars and to rough hands take your grief out to the eye What should I expect from a man who cannot tell between the lighthouse flash and the lightning? Take these lies, make them all true. Keep your
got just a few more for you. Um, we're going to play a Dolly song, because why not? Yeah, thank you, whoever that one person was. <laughs> but I mean, no, I know everybody's excited about Dolly Parton. It really kind of doesn't matter who you are. Um, that's why she, anyway, yeah. Nobody doesn't love Dolly. Nobody doesn't right. love Dolly. So much. Um, we have time for one more. Um, it's been really sweet to be with you all. It's been really sweet to be in here out of the heat. It's actually pretty warm up here, but I think it's probably comfortable <laughs> down there. Um, yeah, thanks so much. If you um, are interested in getting on my mailing list or um, looking at CDs to purchase, if, if you still do that. Um, I have some out front in the Tucker room, which is like, the, it's a beautiful room on the, that side of the lobby. Um, come say hi. Um, look for Kate McCann, Princess Pan, on the socials, and you can find me there, too. I have a lot of shows coming up in Maine, all tentative. We're just, like, going with the flow. <laughs> we'll see where it's safe and responsible to play. Um, in advance of my record coming out in September. And that's called Cabin Fever Dream. And I'm excited to put that out in the world. Um, here's a song that's from my first record. Um, it's kind of a little, I like to close shows with it because it's like a little, it's kind of a little prayer um, for fishermen and everybody. Um, and normally I'd say you can say please sing along, but I, but I think we're not in a situation where we can do that quite yet but hopefully one day. All right. An 
eagle flies over the Andrew sky again. I roll between them on four wheels. We're both looking something slightly more than a wind. Don't you know there's fish and time to kill? Fish and time to kill. Ooh. All three of us is headed for the ocean Cause the water is cold in there today King tide is high and it is swelling Against the shores where king pines once lay King Pines once played. My daddy always said when I was little, you've got to follow that strand of fishing line. Roll it up and put it in your pocket. Cause wouldn't you hate to cause a bird to fail to fly? to fail to fly No 12 pound test around my ankle, but there's something hard to see that holds me down. I'm looking for a higher place to pray from, waiting for the opening of the clouds. Opening of the clouds Ooh. 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 Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> Thank you to the folks at Camden Opera House. Kate McCann. My name is Sarah Trenzo. Come say hi at the merch table. Thank you.